I feel like it was a big, it was a, a good step in the right direction. I feel like it gave me the tools to figure out what I wanted my beliefs to be. And it gave me the realization that I, this is more important than I believe in God and I'm going to church. It's more of this is bigger than me and bigger than anything I can really comprehend. And that it's important to be able to speak about things. Um, I really feel like that it was a really good stepping or stepping stone to get into, you know, figuring myself out. All right, welcome everyone to our 53rd podcast, Renew Your Mind. And with us today, we have Jake, we have uh, Pastor Jordan, who is our youth and family pastor. We have our senior pastor, Paul Gruenberg, and we have myself, Dana Hall, as the moderator. We're in a series with Jake Fuzik, who attended the Summit Ministry uh, Young Adult Student Conferences back in 2018. Um, and he's told us a lot about his experience, and we had a just a few last questions, kind of more deeper questions. Um, so, Jake, when you went to the Summit Conference Ministries, did you do you feel like you knew what your beliefs were at that point in time? Um, honestly, I I felt like I didn't really think about my beliefs. Like, obviously, I I felt like I was a Christian and I knew I was a Christian, but that's because I w- I grew up that way, and I feel like I didn't really take time to think about it yeah. because I was blessed mm-hmm. with amazing parents that um, really guided me in a really great way. But um, they, uh, I mean, I just, I guess I didn't really think for myself too much. That's the con mm-hmm. of having, you know, such a great, you know, system around you and such great experiences is that you don't really have to think for yourself faith, mm-hmm. faith-wise. faith And so Summit really put that to the test and really made me think for myself about what I believe and what I, I want to believe and what I think is right and wrong. And I feel like that was a huge growing point in my life from being a high school kid. Cause I, at the time I was just out of high school. I, mm-hmm. you know, really didn't know where I was going. I hadn't started college yet. I, you know, just got out of um, all kinds of crazy stuff was going on in my life. And I, mm-hmm. I was really kind of lost at that point. And I, I really needed something to, you know, intervene and really help me out. And summit came at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't go into all the details, but I, I really needed I really needed Summit to come along and it came at the the perfect time. Mm. So I think that was a really another reason why Summit was so impactful that it came at the it, it came at the perfect time in my life that I that when I needed it most, I needed something mm-hmm. to really test my my beliefs and test what I wanted for myself. Mm-hmm. And it came it was perfect. Mm-hmm. So So would you say that after you attended those two weeks you had a you felt like you you knew what your beliefs were, or at least um, I feel like it was a big it was a a good step in the right direction. Okay. I feel like it gave me the tools to figure out what I wanted my beliefs to be, uh-huh. and it gave me the realization that I this is more important than I believe in God and I'm going to church. It's more of yeah this mm-hmm. is bigger than me and bigger than anything I can really comprehend, and that it's important to be able to speak about things. Um, especially things like abortion. That was the thing that I really mm. got most out of. Mm-hmm. And that it's more of than just, you know, th- those kind of things. And um, I f- really feel like that it was a really good stepping or stepping stone to get into, you know, that f- figuring myself out. That topic of abortion. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about, you know, how you've learned some things. When you went to Summit, you, you, I think you mentioned before that it wasn't really a big deal. Like mm-hmm. You didn't have a whole lot of things. Yeah. What, what specifically about abortion did they say? What, what kind of facts or what kind of statements did they make that changed your mind that made yeah. it so important all of a sudden? Was well, it really was just the sheer how much they talked about it and how big of a big of an issue it was and the sheer numbers. I didn't understand like the millions and millions of Children, I remember I heard the um, ad. I think before it was released, the um, the pellet, the yeah, pellet ad. I'm the, sure yeah. we've heard around. I've heard we've heard around on the yeah. radio the um, the it's pellets. I think they played that before re- it was released, and I was one of the first. Well, the students in summer were the first, one of the first to hear it, and it, it was just one of the very impactful of hearing like all the wars combined. Abortion has still killed more people than all all of these major wars: World War One, mm. Two. Um, the war, war on Civil, terror, yeah. um, Afghanistan, all of them combined. And it just is mind-blowing. It's Even today, it's inconceivable, the numbers that it is. And 
what it will be if it continues the way it's been continuing. And it's, it's it just some of the things they said, such as um, like the pictures they would show us were shocking. Wow. Yeah. And the um, there's just so much that I'm I'm that's running through my head and speeding through that um, that we just learned so much about it and um, the importance of it and how it's not just cells. It's not just a clump of cells. It's it's life. Cells are life. And it's the it's literally the making of a human being. It's not a human being when it's it's out. It's not a, you know a um a hot and ready pizza. It's a it's yeah. a it's a process. It's yeah. it's something that is it's living and it's it's um developing and development doesn't stop in the womb. It stops at I I I mean I'm still developing at 21 years old. I'm still developing from birth. It, it that's mm-hmm. how it works. Mm-hmm. You don't it's yeah. it's just the birth is just a, a a major part of the development process. So but. so what about action steps? So you know you, you mentioned this was solidifying in your mm-hmm. belief. This is something that changed the way you thought on a, you know mm-hmm. a major topic. What are some of the ways you've changed how you've acted in your life maybe around that topic? Like did you start going to to events or doing things or you know mm-hmm. at doing more research what what kind of things did you start doing once you had that knowledge and and that your perspective mm-hmm. definitely all of the above shortly after summit i i, I uh, attended a, a a conference on abortion and i uh, mm. a lot of the improvements i've made has been definitely speaking more about abortion which has come at a cost um which is the unfortunate truth of it but um, like losing friends, people seeing you differently. Um, I've lost I, countless friends over the fact um, that abortion is is okay and abortion isn't a bad thing and abortion is a woman's right to choose, which none of which I believe are are true. But um, it, losing friends over that is is unfortunate. But um, mm. it's definitely being more stable in my beliefs and knowing what I believe in. And standing up for them and being able to talk to them. Any anybody I meet, and I have a stable relationship with, I make sure they know that's that's what I think. And yeah. if they if they don't like it, we're, I'm more than willing to talk about it. And if you're not willing to talk about it, then I mean, mm-hmm. uh, there's nothing much else I can do other than be open to discussion. Here's so, a curveball. This right. is this is left. It just came. So what? It's uh, you mentioned you lost friends, people. Yes. You know. Are you more comfortable having lost friends but knowing what you believe? Or do you think you would have been more comfortable being quiet and keeping those friends? Not at all because I think true friendship, regardless of what your beliefs are, it, it will stick, it will stay. Mm. If, um, if people aren't willing to accept you for a belief that you have, I feel like that's not even a friendship worth keeping. And I, I, mm. I'll, I'll stick to that and… Um, the people that I'm not friends with, um, I hope that one day they are not friends with anymore, I should say. Um, they can someday come to the realization of what what they believe, regardless if it's if I agree with it or not. I just, I mean, I feel like a lot of the people I disagree with, they don't, they haven't really thought about what they believe in. And I, I feel like abortion is really a one-way street. I feel like you can't, mm. you can't really argue the other way, but... I mean, that's how that's how I think of it. So, well, in you know, we talked in other podcast series before this about sharing our faith, mm-hmm. and we talked about how it can come at a cost. And I think it's interesting to hear your perspective on how when you grew and got into this this place of you're more comfortable being um, judged and and having to pay the cost, whether that's friendships or whatever, mm-hmm. you're more comfortable having that happen. But knowing what you believe and declaring it, because on the other side of the question, before you get there, you probably you know the, the natural thing is to be way more comfortable trying to keep all those people, and mm-hmm. and you know it, it's just something you believe; it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. And you know, in some ways, it's true. You know, if you think Pepsi is better than Mountain Dew, that's one thing. But when it comes to your beliefs about yes. God and and mm-hmm. His interaction with us, there all of a sudden becomes a higher priority. And I just, I think it's it's so interesting to hear your perspective on, you know, in a matter of a few years or even maybe in a few weeks, you know, how that developed over Summit, mm-hmm. how it, it can be, there's this security 
that when you know what you believe and when you know why you believe it, mm -hmm. it's all of a sudden way easier and mm -hmm. a lot more comfortable to share it with mm -hmm. people. Yep. And even if they don't end up agreeing with you, you're comfortable with it. Yep. You it's know. it's kind of like people like nowadays are very insecure about how they how they look, but when you are finally accept who you are, regardless of what you look like or what what issues you have or what you struggle with, if, when you accept yourself, I, it's it's the best feeling in the world. You get the and, comfort, yeah. yeah, and it's the same way with your beliefs. And like you when win. you are able to be secure and and comfortable in your beliefs, you're able to be able to speak about them freely and not worry about who you're going to lose because the people that you do have that they're going to stick with you. So mm. that's that's how I that's how I think of it. Mm. Good. I was going to ask what you thought the church could learn from you, but I think you just told us. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a good lesson. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. I would go ahead and ask that question. What could the church do to be more proactive in helping uh, young adults uh, be mm -hmm. more prepared with a worldview that is true and right? Um, I definitely feel like we're on the right path. We have small groups. We have um, youth group. Um, we have a, a great sanctuary, a great, a great um, community in our church. I think it's one mm -hmm. of the best communities of any church I've ever known. I've, I have friends that go to church and how they speak of their, their church atmosphere. It's nothing that compares to the First United Methodist Church of Gaylord. It's just something special about it. And I'm very grateful to have grown up going to this church in my very important years. And I think that, um, back to the question, is that I think we can just keep improving on what we have and keep building mm -hmm. on what we have. And I think bringing in speakers um, like we have in the past uh, that speak on abortion and other issues that regarding our Christian and biblical views, I think we're doing a great job on that. And I think we just need to keep building on that and, mm -hmm. you know, keep, Keep on keeping on. <laughs> and say there's a teenager that says, uh, I heard you went to Summit. It's kind of it's kind of something I, my mom says I should do, but I don't really want to. But, I mean, why why would I want to go? Um, it, it's life-changing. That's, I mean, that's really all, I mean, that's basically the blunt answer. It, it's life-changing. There's so much to learn. There's so much to do. And even if you, even if, Going to classes is scary. That's one of the things that scared me. I was I was nervous <laughs> about going to class. I, I, I wasn't too fond of school growing up. Still, I'm not fond of school growing up. But, <laughs> but it it definitely in, like I definitely want to learn more after going to Summit. Summit mm -hmm. taught me so much, even beyond what mm -hmm. they taught. Learning became has now become something I want to do more of, not mm -hmm. just so much of. What's, what's the score of the football game? I want to learn more about that. It's more of, I want to extend what I know about topics that I'm passionate about and I want to know as much as I can about them and be able to defend them the best of my ability. So I think that's a big thing. Um, definitely, I mean, Colorado is beautiful. <laughs> There's lots of perks <laughs> yeah. of being in Colorado. Um, yeah. The other locations, I'm sure, are, are beautiful, but Colorado is definitely definitely the, the spot spot to be. Yeah. But um, there's just so much. Um, the people you'll meet are fantastic. The speakers are phenomenal. It's just, there's so much. I, I could go on and on about it. But uh, yeah, I think that that's basically what I would say in a brief, you know, description. So you, you mentioned earlier in one of the last podcasts about a book that you read. Yeah. Uh, that was formative for you. Mm -hmm. Are there other books uh, that if you had a top five list of books that you would recommend uh, young people to read or, or even a list mm -hmm. of books, what might you include in those books? Or who would the, those authors be? Um, well, since I'm not a too, too big of a book reader, reading the book by Jeff Myers, um, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God is a book written by Jeff Myers, one I re read short after, shortly after Summit. Mm -hmm. And that for even made my uh, belief in God even further. Mm. Um, it, he's got some incredible stuff in there. I haven't read all his books. I've read, I think, two of them. I, um, I can't recall the other title, but um, both his books are phenomenal. I'd recommend any book by Jeff Myers. He's a great guy. I met him in person. I got to speak with him. He's a great guy. I would definitely recommend um, books by Ben Shapiro. Um, I would recommend basically anything regarding the issues on abortion. Um, 
But um, definitely, definitely Jeff Myers and Ben Shapiro, I would definitely recommend because mm-hmm. I've read from both of them and they both have phenomenal ideas and, and perspectives on how they believe, especially on the abortion issue, but also mm-hmm. faith and um, how to defend it. Yeah. So uh, abortion um, evidently was a big impact for you. Yes. What would be one or two, maybe three others that really impacted you as far as topics? Um, topic wise, um, more of, I mean, abortion was the big one. Um, probably how to defend our, our faith was a big one of how to defend what the Bible says and how to, um, um, convey the Bible to people that might not understand it and how to Mm -hmm. pass it on. Another one would definitely be, um, man, there's, there's a few, I'm just gotta Mm. think, um, go a few years back. Yeah, (laughs) definitely a few years back. Um, definitely discussions instead of arguments. Right. Um, that, that was a huge, one of their also big topics that they would discuss just the, um, how to have a discussion rather than an argument and how to, Mm. um, use your words in better ways than attacking someone to maybe open up their mind a little bit and plant a seed of a belief that you have and Mm -hmm. to get them thinking rather than get them, you know, mad at you or start an argument and start, you know, Right. Um, having grudges held against. I feel like that having a discussion is much better than an argument and getting the tools from Summit from that has been very beneficial in my life. Jake, how do these conversations come about in today? Like, you know, the last couple of months, like how do you have a tough conversation with somebody? It's not like you walk up and say, hey, let's talk about <laughs> right. you know, well, right. the a Bible of, or, you right. know, I don't know. Um, a lot so of, how do they come about? <laughs> a lot of my uh, conversations I've had with people are mostly... Um, friends, my uh, current girlfriend, me, her and I have conflicting views. We're both Christians, but she she has different views on homosexuality and how how that um, um, reflects to the Bible and abortion, how that, you know, goes back to the Bible. And mm-hmm. we've had we've had hours long discussions over a couple days and of mm. discussions mm-hmm. and what Summit taught me has really helped me have good discussions. And they those discussions have really tested my head and really mm-hmm. made me think. And I think um, being able to speak about those things with people that you care about and people that are close to you is a yeah. very important skill. Mm-hmm. And especially family, because that's another big thing that I sure. we have. Um, our family is fairly divided on on issues such as that. And being able to talk about it and openly and respect each other. Respect is a big a big part of having a civil sure. mm-hmm. um conversation rather than an argument. I feel like that's a big part of it. And, and if things get, you know, too tense, it's best to end, end the conversation. And that's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a big things that we learned. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So may not feel comfortable, but you still do it. Yes. That's you kinda, still do it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, any other questions for Jake? Yeah. The Bible is just an old book. The Bible is just an old book. Sure. Why well, should history I History would say it? otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> There's mo- many, many instances of the Bible either predicting or literal physical evidence of biblical occurrences, such as um, the Jesus being raised from the dead. There's the tomb that he was in. That's that's there. Um, I think there's... It just happens to be empty. It just happens <laughs> to be empty. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but um, there's many instances. I think they found... I, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I'm, I'm, I think they found pieces of the ark, what they think to be the ark. I mm-hmm. think they found pieces of what they think to be the crosses, the three crosses on the hill. Um, there's so many instances of the Bible being true. And I've had personal experiences where I, it's been like, I know, I know God's real. I know yeah. that he's there. And those, you know, come at the, well, you don't know that that's real, but I, I know I experienced it. And that's really all that matters. I know that it happened. And yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, you know, what someone else does with that is their, you know, thing, but, yeah. but there's many, many instances of the Bible being true and, um, Jesus being real, and it, it reflects today. There's predictions of how um, times will get tougher and tougher as the time that Jesus returns um, it Draws is near, nearing, yeah. and mm-hmm. it is showing today things that are happening. You know, today would not have been okay years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like um, I think we'll. I want to, and we might cut this out, but <laughs> like for example, like the like um Cardi B and Megan the Stallion, the the rapper, the modern day rappers at the the music awards recently, they were yeah basically naked yeah. on stage dancing, and that wouldn't have been okay mm-hmm. twenty years ago, 
And mm. I think that seeing these things being okay, that aren't okay, that the Bible specifically states aren't okay. Um, I think that it's evidence right there that the, the time of Jesus returning is on its way. And I feel like things like that are very evident if you just look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got to mm -hmm. open your eyes. So. Okay. Well, thank you, Jake. Um, yeah. We really appreciate your time and your sharing your experiences and um, answering all our questions because we had a lot this time. <laughs> we did. Yeah. All right. And, um, and just, to, yeah. just to remind everyone that Jake's experience is available for those who are younger. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a mom or a dad and you've got a younger child at home, this is something that you can begin thinking about in terms of how can I help my child to become more uh, Christian in their worldview, understand how to talk about uh, different subjects. Because, you know, even as parents, we don't always, we're not always comfortable or have the knowledge to pass that along how to defend the faith. And so here's an experience that we can encourage parents to think about sending their child to at some point down the road when they get older. And, um, you know, Jake, you've been blessed. Definitely. And, and so that's a great, you know, your experiences, the testimony that you're providing for those who will be hearing this mm -hmm. is immensely uh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. I want to say that it was one of the best experiences. And if anybody out there has kids and is thinking about it, I, it's the best decision they'll ever make and you may ever make. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredibly influential in their life and will change their life forever mm -hmm. as it has for me. So that's, I mean, what else can I say? It's good capstone statement <laughs> yep. right there. Yeah, <laughs> very good. I think you wrapped it up nicely. All right, um, well, we will end the podcast there. Um, we are at the First United Methodist Church, and if you want to visit us in person, we have a 9 a.m. traditional service and a 1045 contemporary service. You can also view that on Facebook or YouTube. Um, if you have any questions at all, please call us at 989-732-5380 or visit us on our website. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.